Numbers chapter 20, verse 5 is where you'll find our text for today. Um, and it reads like this. And wherefore have he made us to come up out of Egypt to bring us unto this evil place? It is no place of seed or of figs, no vines, no pomegranates, neither is there any water to drink. And Moses and Aaron went from the presence of the assembly unto the door of the tabernacle of the congregation, and they fell upon their faces, and the glory of the Lord appeared unto them. As the Lord spake unto Moses, saying, Take the rod, and gather thou the assembly together, you and Aaron, your brother, and speak ye unto the rock before their eyes, and it shall give forth his water, and thou shalt bring forth to them water out of the rock. So thou shalt give the congregation and their beasts drink. And Moses took the rod from before the Lord, as he commanded him, and Moses and Aaron uh, gathered the congregation together before the rock, and he said unto them, Look, you rebels, must we fetch water out of this rock? And Moses lifted up his hand, and with his rod he smote the rock twice, and the water came out abundantly. And the congregation drank, and their beasts also. And the Lord spake unto Moses and Aaron, Because you believe me not, to sanctify me in the eyes of the children of Israel. Therefore you shall not bring this congregation to the land which I have given thee. This is the water of Meribah, because the children of Israel strove with the Lord and was sanctified in them. Verse 8, God tells Moses to speak to the rock. And verse 11, Moses decides to strike the rock. Verse 8, Moses is instructed by God to speak to the rock. In verse 11, Moses strikes the rock. I want to talk about out of God's will and in God's will. <laughs> out of God's will and in God's will. Let me read this in another translation so you can make it so it can make sense to you. Uh, then and why then and why and why did you take us out of Egypt in the first place? Dragging us into this miserable country. Ain't no grain, no figs, no grapevines, no pomegranates, and not even any water. Moses and Aaron walked from the assembly congregation to the tent of meeting and threw themselves face down on the ground. And they saw the glory of God and spoke to Moses, take the staff, assemble the community with all your brother and Aaron and speak to the rock that's right in front of them and it will give you water. You will bring water out of the rock for them, the congregation and the cattle, so they can drink. Moses took the staff away from God's presence as commanded, and he and Aaron wrote, uh, rounded up the whole congregation, all the people in front of the rock. Moses spoke, listen, rebels, do we, do we have to bring water out of this rock for you? With, with that, Moses raised his arm and slammed his staff against the rock once and then twice. Water poured out. The congregation and cattle drink, and God said to Moses and Aaron, because you didn't trust me, you didn't treat me with holy reverence in front of my people, you too are going to lead this company into the land that I am giving them. These are the waters of Meribah, which means bickering, where the people of Israel are bickered with God, and he revealed himself as holy. Again, I'm going to be talking about out of the wheel and in God's way. I, I, this this past week, I ordered a, uh, um, I always forget to do this, y'all do not let me forget to issue this baptism certificate before I uh, get done today. Uh, every once in a while, well, I have to be honest, I do, I shop quite a bit on Amazon. <laughs> Anybody shop on Amazon? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> good place to find some good deals too, Yeah. And so, um, I, I, I do quite a bit of uh, uh, purchasing from Amazon and and uh, I like to send my packages to my P.O. box. And so, uh, but I, I, I ordered this particular item on Amazon this past week, and I got to um, make, get ready to place my order. And there was an error message that showed up saying, you can't place the order because the address is not an approved address. 
I could not send it to a PO box. They wanted a physical address. So I said, well, okay. So I had my package sent to the church. And so uh, uh, most times when I order from Amazon, the, the, the carrier is going to bring my package. And if I'm not there, they're going to drop it off at the door and leave it there for me to retrieve when I get to that particular place. I had the package shipped to the church. And when I got uh, when, when I was tracking my package online, um, I discovered they were out. It was out for delivery. And so I'm, I'm, I'm waiting around. I'm thinking they're going to drop my package out for me. And much to my chagrin and my frustration, I get to the church and find a sticker on the door that says, Sorry, we missed you, but these are the instructions you're going to need. And I was frustrated because I was trying to figure out why didn't you just leave my package like most times you do it. Uh, I discovered when I did my, did my homework that there are some packages you have to sign for and somebody has to be there to retrieve that package. Now watch this, my package was here, but I was not here. And so they gave me instructions, they said, we're going to make another delivery attempt. Not to a new address, but the same address. Determined that we determined that this package was, were, was I, I later on discovered that this package that I had had been shipped with insurance. And when you ship a package with insurance, they want a signature upon delivery. The carrier left this note stating that they would, they would, they would attempt the delivery again at another address. So I waited at the church all day for my package and finally my package arrived. I want you to understand that, that there, is some, there are some blessings God will only send to, to his will for your life. With that being said, a lot of us is ask ourselves the question, and we have a problem with this, because the question is not where is my blessing, but the question is where were you when it was delivered? <laughs> See, I found out that a lot of us are just like me. We're frustrated because we have not received what we have been praying for. We have not received what we've been asking for. And a lot of times our problem is, is just like me, that I was not in the place God wanted me to be to receive what I needed to receive. My blessing was shipped to the church. It got to the church. But because I was not here, I did not receive what I had been praying for. A lot of us are just like that. We are wondering, Lord, where is my blessing? Where is my miracle? And God said, I sent it to my will for your life. But because you weren't there, you couldn't receive it. Mm. Let me put it to you this way. If God's will is for you to be here, and you pray, and God said, I'm going to send you your blessing, but you operate all the way over here. You live way outside of God's will. God says, I'm not sending your blessings to a place I didn't call you to. God says, I'm not sending your blessings to a place I did not call you to. The will of God is the place where God has promised to protect you and promised to bless you. God will not guarantee protection and blessing in a lifestyle he did not ordain, in a lifestyle he did not approve. And a lot of us are living outside of God's will, but we're praying for God's blessings. And God says, I don't send blessings to a cursed place. God says, I do not send blessings to a, 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 a cursed place. In other words, you this blessing. Remember I talked last week, I don't want you to understand that there's a difference between being in God's house and being in God's presence. See, a lot of us are in God's house, but we're not in God's presence. We, we, we go to church, but the church is not in us. We know of God, but God is not in us. We, 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 we quote scripture, but the scripture ain't in us. The Bible tells us to not just be hearers of the word, but be ye doers of the word. A lot of us are in trouble because we are living outside of God's will, but we wonder, where is our blessing? And God said, I sent them to the place you ain't showed up, baby. Right. God said, like, perhaps you were out of God's will, and therefore, because you are out of God's will, now you are in God's way. Come on, come on, come on. What's wrong? And the question is, where are you when your blessings are shipped? What are you doing? Where are you? Where are you operating? Who are you with that has drew you out of God's will? Where, what are you doing that's caused you to miss the delivery attempt? What, 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 what lifestyle uh, 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 miss, what lifestyle adjustments do you need to make to get in God's will? Who is it that you're fooling with that's got you out of God's will? Where, where are you hanging out 
they had that got you outside of God's will? What habits do you have that keep you out of God's yes, will? Are you smoking something that keeps you out of His will? Oh. Are you drinking something that's keeping you out of His yes, will? Sir. Are you sleeping with ah? Oh, yeah, yeah. uh, the, the people that get you outside of God's will. What are you doing that's causing you to miss the delivery of your blessings? Wait a minute, Pastor. I thought this was a series about how to access my blessings through fasting and praying. You can't get your blessings if you're not there when they're delivered. You can't live any kind of way and expect God to ship your blessings to the drug house. Yes, sir. God ain't shipping your blessings to the liquor store. Uh -huh. He's not shipping your blessings to the place where you shack it at. He ain't shipping your blessings. Oh, y'all are all right. God ain't gonna ship your blessings to a place that's out of his will. God sends blessings to a blessed place. He does not ship blessings to a cursed place. We pray, Lord, ship me my blessings. And he says, start time. Lord, ship me my blessings. Or bring peace in my house. We'll stop talking about anybody else. <laughs> Lord, ship me my blessing. We'll stop lying so much. Why? Lord, why can't they be honest with me? Because you can't be honest with me. Lord, Lord, send me a husband. Stop bothering somebody else. Lord, send me a, get me a new job. Be on time for the one you got. Lord. Give me a new house. Clean up the one you got, right? Clean up your apartment you're in there. Lord, Lord, give me a new car. Go watch the one and get the all kinds of things. Lord, fix my husband. Lord, fix my wife. Lord, fix my kids. And God said, I can't fix them till I fix you. Lord, Lord, you send me a miracle. He said, well, get somewhere and see me. God is saying, I, if, you, if you can't get everything you asking for from me, I need from you. And it ain't that God ain't blessing you. It ain't that God ain't sending your blessings. You are absent and therefore can't receive them. Because you are out of God's will and now you are in God's way. It's one thing for you to be out of God's will. It's another thing for you to be in his way. Because when you're in his way, you are impeding his progress. You are standing in the way of godly movement. And God says, I can, I know how to get you out of my way. Now, you ain't got to live in my will, but you most definitely going to get out of my way. God's will is not limited to a mere matter of right and wrong. We think God's will is, comes down to right and wrong. But God's will is not limited to just morally right and wrong. God's will is not just limited to that, but, but it also comes down to what's right and wrong for you. Because something may not be wrong, but it doesn't necessarily mean it's right for you. Right. Hmm. Right. Uh, let me see if I can make this plain. What do you mean, Pastor? Well, uh, I, I don't drink. And never had. Never had a sip in my life. And, I ain't saying I'm perfect. I just never had that. That was never my issue. But I'm old enough. If I want to go have a drink, I don't think God gonna beat me up for that. <laughs> you know, I mean, there's nothing wrong with having a glass of wine or a drink. But I don't have a drink because it's not wrong. It's just not right for me. See, God's will comes down to what's right and wrong for you. It may, see, it might be okay for others to do certain things, but it's not okay for you to do certain things. Because God's will for your life may not be the same as God's will for somebody else's life. When you have a higher calling, there is a higher level of responsibility, a higher level of accountability, and some things you just can't do. We keep praying, Lord, give me a promotion. Lord, elevate my ministry. And he's saying, you do know to whom much is given, much is required. And there are some things you just can't do because it's not in his will for your life. Amen. So in our text today, uh, our text today, our text today draw, invites us to this desert place in the wilderness called Zen. This wilderness area is located south of the Dead Sea and south of Judah. It's between death and praise. It's between the Dead Sea and Judah. The city of 
this, 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 this situational city in Zen is located between death and praise. Because Judah means praise. It is tucked between these two counterparts and these Israelites praying their way out of Egyptian bondage and complain their way into this wilderness. They pray their way out and complain their way back in for in bondage. God did not deliver them from satanic bondage only for them to land in self-bondage. Because uh, see, a lot of us make the tragic mistake of we are delivered from satanic bondage. But the real problem is not the enemy, it becomes the enemy. The real problem becomes us. If we can just get free from ourselves, what we think. We, you know that people always got to think negative? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah, I say, just say amen. I mean, they always negative. And on top of that, the problem, here's another thing. The, you know that people where the problem is everybody else? Yeah. It ain't never them. They don't ever admit that they wrong, they messed up, they made a mistake. The problem is everybody else. Oh, it's the man trying to get me down. No, you just need to go to work. <laughs> it, 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 it's always everybody else and the problem ain't never them. It's because sometimes people don't want to admit that the real issue is you. And until God fix you, you can't pray that he fix everybody else. <laughs> It was God's will for them to get to the promised land. However, they wandered 38 years on a five-mile journey. They were 38 years on a journey that should have took them three weeks. They spent 38 years in unnecessary wilderness because they were out but not free. And there's a difference between being brought out and being free. See, for example, if, 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 if I'm bound, and this table is, is what has me bound, and I pray God deliver me, God deliver me, God deliver me, all God does is move the table. Now, I have to be free enough to walk out. But the problem is, is when I walk out, now I'm out, but it does not necessarily make me free. Because if I'm free from a thing, I'm going to walk out and keep going and never look back. But the problem is, we get out and we start remembering what, we start remembering what, what bondage used to feel like. And we, we don't leave. We, we, we just stand close to the place God cut us from. We, we stand close to the place God delivered us from. And we start checking up on the place God brought us out from. Look at how y'all looking at me. Look at how y'all looking at me. God delivered you like he asked you to ask him to, but you got to keep looking and making sure. I wonder what they doing. I wonder, yeah. I wonder if they got a birthday party going on. I wonder if they got a birthday party going on. Oh, Jesus, give me this problem. I, I wonder if, I wonder if, you know, I wonder if, you, you all the way over there. God posted up, you supposed to be out of this mess long time ago. But it ain't that God didn't bring you out. It's just that you got out, but you ain't free. You are out, but you're not free. You ain't free until you can say, I'm done with this mess. And I said, I'm going to keep my eyes pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high collar. You ain't free until you can keep walking and never look back. And I don't know about you, but I've been through too much in my life to be going back, tasting stuff that God said, I'm going to free you from. <laughs> Yeah, one of my niggas just said he just stuck on stupid. <laughs> you saved, sanctified, and stuck. What you going back there for? What you texting them for? What you calling them for? Why do you want to know what they did this morning and what time they got home and what time the, what time did the party stop? If God brought you out of that, you are not even sure what they doing. Right. 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 So they get here to this wilderness place and they say that you done drug us to this place. Now, it's ironic. Let me show you how messy Israel is. They pray that God get them out. But they lay in the wilderness and they talk about, I was drugged. Isn't it funny how people ask you for stuff but that they really ain't ready for? But then when they've got to go through something to maintain their freedom, but you 
drug me today. <laughs> Was 
with infected prayer. With infected worship. See, you got to understand, you can't pray for blessings from a cursed place. The problem is, they made the tragic mistake of praying to God and worshiping God with hell in their hearts. Mm -hmm. uh, the point I'm trying to make is, we make the tragic mistake of when we come to God, we are still coming to God in spirit, but not in truth. They had what I call infected prayers, meaning they probably walked in and used their prayer life to get an attitude. Lord, you're going to have to do something about me. Lord, you're going to have to fix them. See, your prayers ought to be in God's will too. A lot of us make these tragic mistakes of trying to use God as a rock wild, a dog, to go get our enemies. God ain't your uh, bodyguard. Our prayer life can be infected. We worship God from a place of pride and a place where we want to be seen. We want we 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 go to God with uh, with, uh, with with impurities in our heart, and we expect God to move. And God says, "I ain't going to be dealing with no infected prayers or infected worship." That's why God is what I call a disinfected. He'll clean you up in the dirtiest of places. He will disinfect what you infected. Stop allowing people's negativity to infect you. Because everybody that's in church ain't necessarily in Christ. You know, what, what really burns me up about people in ministry is when they are so negative. I mean negative. And, and they're so negative, they always got something bad to say. I mean, it ain't never going to go right. God can rain down manna from heaven. They're going to complain, but ain't no need in it. <laughs> and he can rain down states where he could have gave us soft too. Right. Uh -huh. I mean, there's people like that in church. And you got to be careful because these people are contagious. They are infectious. They have a problem. They are negative. I mean, negative. Can't do nothing right. And, and, then, and, and most people, you can, I'm going to tell you how you can spot how negative people, people, how negative people are. Usually, they operate and act out of order. Usually, they are so negative that they get out of order. They start standing out of order, talking out of order, doing things out of order. It's because they are negative. And the reason why they are negative is most people who are negative are just not happy. They're not happy with their own life. Right. 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 See, you, you can share what God is doing in your life with them, uh -huh. and they're going to tell you, tell, girl, I'm going to get married. Well, girl, now let me tell you. <laughs> Moses and Aaron 
gathered the congregation together for a rock and say, he said unto them, Here ye now, rebels, must we fetch you water out of this rock? <coughs> Y'all ain't caught too. <laughs> we <coughs> when you start pulling water out of rocks, <laughs> Moses thought, because he was God's leader, <laughs> he thought he was doing the miracles. <laughs> no, son, God is using you to do the miracles.
with it don't mean he was okay with what you did. Just because it worked don't mean it's his will. The water giving rock was a prototype of Christ. He got in God's way because the rock represents the, the, the rock of Christ. In 1 Corinthians 10 and 4, it talks about the water coming from the rock. Jesus is our rock. When they pierce him in his side, the Bible says water and blood came. When that woman was at the well, she met and she was thirsty. She met a well sitting on top of, she met the well sitting on top of a well. And he said, if you be part of me, you'll never thirst again. That's because he's the water giving rock. He is Christ and the rock has already been struck. So striking the rock the first time was about the crucifixion. It was a prototype of the crucifixion. And what Moses decides he's going to do is he's going to crucify God again. It was so dangerous. He, he, but look at the last thing in verse 12. He was infected by people. He was affected by power. This one messed me up. And then he was rejected of the promise. Look at verse 12. Therefore, you shall not bring these people into the promised land. What? This seems real harsh. Because he says to them, this, this is Moses. Moses led him out. Been with him all this time. And then all of a sudden, he can't bring him in all because he messed up one time. I said, Lord, that's a little harsh. He can't go to the promised land because he struck the rock instead of speaking to the rock. Moses' anger caused him. God said, yeah, because Moses' anger caused him to play God. And God don't play when you try to play him. You can't be God and pray to God at the same time. A lot of us make the tragic mistake of trying to fall into God's authority. We try to do God's thing, do it God's way without God's permission. And God says you can't play God. You can't call yourself a hustler and go, uh, uh, yeah, sell this and sell that and then call yourself I'm the provider of the house. No, you ain't the provider. God is the provider. That's you, can't, you can't expect your wife to follow you to a place you won't go. You can't play God. God said, Paul said, follow me as I follow Christ. And if you are not following Christ but you taking God's credit, you are playing God. And God said, you can't play me. Moses. What blessings have your disobedience cost you? Is there a reason why you can't get what you ask God for? Maybe it's because you've been out of his will and in his way. You notice he called the new spring, he, my, this new spring, the place of big bickering. It was a place of complaining because they made the tragic mistake of complaining to God. God, why did you punish them so severely? Because he disobeyed me. Disobedience will always land you outside of your promises. But not only did he did they disobey him, but they failed to trust him. They didn't trust God. God said, you didn't trust me. I didn't see that in the text. I said, Lord, how did they not trust you? It's because when you get angry, you start doing it your way. You start doing it your own way. When God don't move, when you say move, you start doing it the way you think. You know what? I'll just go back to gambling. Because God ain't fixed it. I go back to Shaq. Because he ain't sent my move. I go back to sin because I'm going to do it my way. And God says, in order for you to be blessed by me, you got to come through me. Is that we want what we want from God so bad that we're willing to uh, sin to get it. You want your blessing so bad that you're willing to uh, uh, sin to get it. And to get it from God, you must go through God. And a lot of us are making the tragic mistake. 
name in his word. Stop trying to pray that God make a way. Stop praying God make a way. And you still in the way. You can't make a way with you in the way. Somebody here today, you need to get your hands out. Somebody here today, you need to stop trying to fix it. Stop trying to fix it. You know what I learned? Let people be people. Come on, come on, come on. Folk go loud. They don't talk about you. And usually, they do that because they're afraid of what's in you. They're jealous of what God put in you. And so they want to destroy. They can't take your gift. But they'll take the joy you use to enjoy. But I'm telling you what I learned about people and enemies. God. God will get vengeance better than you ever could. He'll fix it to where people that lie on you. He'll fix it where they gotta come get you. Folks that complain about you, let them complain. Because he'll fix it. Because the Bible says you're going to reap what you sow. Stop getting out of God's will because you're mad. Stay in his will. Because ain't nothing more frustrating than God shipping your blessings to a place you ain't been. I want you to understand and it is his will that you be blessed. But you can't get the blessings operating out of his will. It's time to fix it. It's time to stop praying God and fix everybody with you. Grandma, you say, it's me, oh Lord. It's not my brother. Not my sister. It's me. You, you broke because you don't manage your money. Not because people have to get you. You were going to the doctor because you won't eat right. That's why you get in his will so he can bless you. Every head bowed, every eye closed. Father, in the name of Jesus, reveal to us what your will is for our life. Lord, if we pray and ask you for anything that's not in your will, you not grant our request, but show us your will so we can stay out of your way. Lord, let us help us to be obedient to you, even when we don't understand. Because your ways are not our ways, and your thoughts are not our thoughts. You, you, you gave us common sense to deal with common people but not to deal with you. Because you said in your word that we all lean not to our own understanding, but in everything we do acknowledge you so you can direct our path. Now, Lord, if somebody may be here that don't know you in the part of their sins, 